Put it on. They can hear you. Oh, okay. uh, it's going to take me a bit to figure out how they can see you. Okay. Uh, can one of you who has a copy of the Heart Sutra? Read the Heart Sutra. I'm not going to be able to uh, present it while I'm trying to do text stuff. Uh, okay, I can do that. Great. Thank you. Sorry, I had to un figure out. <laughs> I'm having a hard time myself. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> the Heart of the Perfection of Wisdom Sutra. I prostrate, uh, Arya Bhagavati Prajna Paramita Hridaya Sutra. I prostrate to the Arya Triple Gem. Thus did I hear at one time. The Bhagavan was dwelling on massive vultures mountain on Rajagriha together with a great community of monks and a great community of bodhisattvas. At that time, the Bhagavan was absorbed in the concentration on the categories of phenomena called profound perception. Also at that time, the bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Aryavalokiteshvara, looked upon the very practice of the profound perfection of wisdom and beheld those five aggregates also as empty of inherent nature. Then through the power of Buddha, the Venerable Shariputra said this to the Venerable Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Arya, Avalokiteshvara, how should any son of the lineage train who wishes to practice the activity of the profound perfection of wisdom? He said that, and the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Arya, Avalokiteshvara said this to the Venerable Shadadvati Putra. Shariputra, any son of the lineage or daughter of the lineage who wishes to practice the activity of the profound perfection of wisdom should look upon it like this, correctly and repeatedly beholding those five aggregates also as empty of inherent nature. Form is empty. Emptiness is form. Emptiness is not other than form. Form is also not other than emptiness. In the same way, feeling, discrimination, compositional factors and consciousness are empty. Shariputra, likewise, all phenomena are emptiness without characteristic, unproduced. Uh, pardon me, I thought something else was going on. I'm going to back up to form is empty. Emptiness is form. Emptiness is not other than form. Form is also not other than emptiness. In the same way, feeling, discrimination, compositional factors, and consciousness are empty. Shariputra, likewise, all phenomena are emptiness, without characteristics, unproduced, unceased, stainless, not without stain, not deficient, not fulfilled. 
Shariputra, therefore, in emptiness, there is no form, no feeling, no discrimination, no compositional factors, no consciousness, no eye, no ear, no nose, no tongue, no body, no mind, no visual form, no sound, no odor, no taste, no object of touch, and no phenomenon. There is no eye element, and so on, and up to and including no mind element, and no mental consciousness element. There is no ignorance, no extinction of ignorance, and so on, and up to and including no aging and death, and no extinction of aging and death. Similarly, there is no suffering, origination, cessation, and path. There is no exalted wisdom, no attainment, and also no non-attainment. Shariputra, therefore, because there is no attainment, bodhisattvas rely on and dwell in the perfection of wisdom, the mind without obscuration and without fear. Having completely passed beyond error, they reach the end point of nirvana. All the Buddhas who dwell in the three times also manifestly completely awaken to unsurpassable, perfect, complete enlightenment and reliance on the perfection of wisdom. Therefore, the mantra of the perfection of wisdom, the mantra of great knowledge, the unsurpassed mantra, the mantra equal to the unequaled, the mantra that thoroughly pacifies all suffering should be known as the truth, since it is not false. The mantra of the perfection of wisdom is declared, tayata gate gate paragate parasamgate prasbodhi soha. Tayata gate gate paragate parasamgate bodhi soha. Tayata gate gate paragate parasam gate bodhisoha. Shariputra, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva, should train in the profound perfection of wisdom like that. Then the Bhagavan arose from that concentration and commended the Bodhisattva Mahasattva, Aryavalokiteshvara, saying, Well said, well said, son of lineage. It is like that. It is like that. One should practice the profound perfection of wisdom just as you have indicated. Even the Tathagatas rejoice. The Bhagavan, having thus spoken, the Venerable Sharadvati Putra, the Mahasattva, Arya Vadukateshvara, those surrounding him there entirely, that you turn the wheel of dharma including the lesser and greater common and extraordinary approaches We're trying to get Lama's audio working.
I suggest the Manjushri mantra until we have audio. Can you guys hear Lamo? The only thing I could hear, the only thing I could hear was you with uh, quite a bit of an echo. More money pay me at home. Yeah. So there we go. Cannot start your video because uh, they can hear me. So that's good. Okay. So uh, we're studying the study of. Uh, well, Tantrika, um, I thought it'd be good to back up uh, for our students here to go over some really key points, uh, key um, concerns that uh, Buddhists had in India. <clears throat> so, A big concern uh, isn't just getting the words of the Buddha correct, uh, but uh, when we're looking at the Shastras here, the commentaries, uh, the masters are really interested in, in uh, what is reality? Uh, so, uh, and what is uh, absolute and what is relative? <clears throat> so we've talked a lot about the two truths. Um, the other concern is certainty. So uh, it's something we've talked a little bit less. Uh, because uh, I talked to people and I said, what, what's, uh, you know, what's the truth here? What does the Buddha say or what is Nagarjuna say, or what is um, the school or this tenant, and people can um, say yes, this is this is it, and then I say, well, uh, do you know that to be true? Is that um, true for you? And then there's doubts. So that's kind of interesting. Should be interesting. So. We, we know something, uh, or, is, or is it information? So <clears throat> in the West, uh, particularly maybe just California, uh, people, people could say uh, something like, uh, I, know I, I know I should stop smoking, whatever, uh, but uh, you know, I, I, just, I just can't. <clears throat> So, uh, and I usually follow up with, uh, well, you have the information that uh, that might be harmful or not useful, whatever you're smoking or ingesting. Uh, so you just have information, you don't have knowledge. So in India and in the uh, Dharma cultures that have absorbed 
uh, Indian Buddhism, like Tibet, Mongolia, Bhutan, and Nepal, Sikkim, <laughs> uh, India, Maha India, is uh, it'd be silly to say you know something without having certainty. <clears throat> So those two are, are really linked. And then it would be weird to say, you know something and you have certainty without being able to provide evidence, either through scripture, uh, through uh, direct words of the Buddha, through logic, <clears throat> through your own experience to teachings from your own teacher or just basically common sense. So certainty and uh, knowing what's true uh, have to be joined. So in the West, uh, we can say a lot like, yeah, I know I need to meditate more. And I'm thinking, well, you don't because you're not. So what, what would be the right word to say? So when studying Dharma, uh, if we say we know something, um, the idea is that you also have certainty and you also have evidence and um, you would also have motivation. So uh, we, we classical dharma, we're not separating um, the knowing from the action and we're not separating the knowing from the action and uh, the complete confidence certainty. So that's big. Whereas um, we can do that, uh, we can do that in the West, right? We can say, I know, I know I should be doing this, or I know that all phenomena are you know, empty from their own side, though, things like that. So how do we start using knowledge and the word knowledge uh, in a correct way according to Dharma? So um, that's kind of the topic. Um, that I'd like to explore today. So, <clears throat> this was also a concern for um, Western philosophers, right? Uh, for Greek philosophers and European and American, how, what, what is it? to say we know something, how can we be certain of it? And uh, how can we prove it? <clears throat> These are the really important concerns um, in Dharma. How can we know something? How can we demonstrate our knowledge? Uh, how do we achieve certainty? What would it be like in our Dharma practice if we only talked about or said in speech or even in our dreams what we actually know to be the case? What, what would that be like? Would, would we be able to start from there? So I'd like to propose that uh, from uh, the very beginning, uh, the Buddha wanted to break it down so that uh, we would only talk about what we actually knew uh, to be certain in which was the case. <clears throat> well, we have uh, the first uh, truth, which is noble. <clears throat> uh, truth of uh, dukkha. <clears throat> Can we say that we actually uh, 
we we know dukkha? Can we say that? Are we? Do we have any doubts whatsoever? If you have some doubts, <laughs> the audience here are out in TV land. You should raise your hand. No doubts. Jack has doubts. <laughs> <laughs> When we do have doubts, the tradition asks us to explore these until we have certainty so that we don't end up in either a nihilistic or an eternalistic position. But maybe most importantly for the West, uh, we don't end up in a skeptic agnostic position, which seems to be a very popular um, way to sidestep. <laughs> Like, well, I don't know, maybe this, it might be that. Um, sometimes they feel it's this, sometimes they feel it's that. So in our Dharma training, if we train in a formal way, um, that's actually not acceptable. <clears throat> in fact, it's almost better to be really certain about the wrong answer. <laughs> In, in our tradition. <clears throat> so I don't know if possibly um, tonight we'd be able to do it, you know, what, uh, what people could say they're absolutely certain about, but what could people stop, start with? So this knowledge, this certainty, and this motivation, what, what would be, what could we start with? Uh, what's the foundation? <clears throat> and uh, different uh, approaches, of course, um, we start from slightly different places. So from a foundation, Point of view, we would start with the truth of dukkha. But uh, can anybody share what another starting point would be? You're on. You can, I can't hear you. Any, what, what, what would you be? What could you be really certain about? So I know. I don't, well, I'm not sure you'd have to say a little bit more. So the meditation is kind of recognizing that um, as much as you become awake, because you recognize that the things of this world aren't what's going to bring a lead to suffering. So the renunciation is going to be kind of strong. Motivation and wish to come away. So what what do you know that is connected with the motivation that you're certain of? What do I know that's connected with the, the motivation to become uh, away? Okay. No, you say that it's this thing called renunciation, right? So how do you how do you know that's what's necessary? What what do you know about reality that says, okay, I've got a develop this um, motivation. Well, I know um, that um, the things that I, um, you know, I'll just go after to try to bring me happiness will not bring me happiness to know like the eight world of concerns come to mind that have been so spelled out there in a really kind of simple but clear way that we look at them and we can say, yes, that's it, that's not, well, for being really tough, um, Patty's being very brave at giving a response here. So, are you still participating in the eight worldly concerns? Yes. So maybe you really don't know. Actually, I like participate in them, and then within seconds, I'm like, no, that's not it. I mean, like, I might be at, I get hooked and get hooked, and then that's it. Yeah. So 
what what wouldn't help you see what what would you know for sure you would just go that's it Not, not something you catch yourself later, which is good, but what what do you absolutely no doubt you you know it and you act on it and you want to keep acting on it. I don't know about love. Okay, so I don't love it. okay. All right. So what what do you, how do you know that? So you're certain. <laughs> yeah. So, right. Yeah. So, so you have the certainty, right? There's no doubts. And knowing I harmed others and accumulating another way. Right. Right. So you don't have any doubts about that yeah. assertion, no doubts, and you have evidence. No, not necessarily. We're just exploring what it is to really know something and have no doubts. So that that knowing would withstand any challenge. Yeah. So somebody could say, oh, you're a little this or a little that, or I've seen you do this, or I've just seen you do that. And you go, no, I still have complete knowing and confidence. All right. So what's what's different about that than kind of the knowing that's in parentheses that's um incomplete that still has doubts. What's the difference between certainty and doubt? <clears throat> well, we're, we're very certain about, so we're not just talking about the content, that's content, like I love my kids, but what, what is it about, what, what is the difference between certainty and doubt? That you can notice, like this is now I'm doubting, now I'm certain. It's unwavering. When you have certainty, it's unwavering, right? No matter what, it's unconditional. <clears throat> they, no matter what they, for example, with my kids, no matter what they do, because I notice okay. that they've done a lot of things. <laughs> 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 I mean, they That's do true. Have, and, yeah. uh, and I, I'm supposed okay, to. So. Okay, so delusion can be unwavering. Mm -hmm. So that cannot be by itself a category, right? So, uh, you know, we can't have that, you know, quality of knowing. In a way that I don't make me certain that it's possible. But it's, is it, is it always, well, what is, yeah, so when you say certainty, that's possible. Okay, we could accept that. But once again, uh, what is it that is certainty? So certainty does have to be connected with some kind of correct perception, right? Mm -hmm. You can't just assert certainty. Yes. So um, when we're exploring our actual experience, we we really do want to use the tools, the insights, the methodology that we're learning in Dharma practice. Mm -hmm. 
they actually want to use it. <clears throat> One thing that happens with um, Western Dharma students is uh, we have uh, so many uh, different ideologies, different ways that we uh, go about things that we have kind of, uh, you know, we have our kind of California psychological world and we have scientific political world and relationship world. And then, then we think we have uh, the Dharma, the Dharma world's reserved for, you know, kind of rarefied topics or something, right? So in our daily practice and training, uh, actually to find out what's uh, actually real and how we know it and confidence, uh, we're expected to use um, our Dharma training like that. <clears throat> what would be, uh, is that kind of, does that seem too fascist or something? I'm wondering. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> isn't it true that a lot of times we divide things up into all these different uh, methodologies to know something and, and maybe they don't even talk to each other? Don't we do that? <clears throat> so when we're talking to our therapist, we talk some way. When we're talking to our llama, we talk one way when we're talking to our uh, relationship or our kids or the public. Don't we talk different ways? What would it be like if you, um, if it was just kind of consistent? Would that be too weird? <clears throat> if you have to um, edit sometimes, depending on the person that you're talking to, because it might hurt them. Yeah, we even have to edit when talking to the Lama, right? So of course, you know, we're using discrimination, yeah. Skillful, right? Yeah. yeah. So Rose can be editing, but what, what would it be like if we just had like work from uh, just the most fundamental truth system we could find and everything went into that, um, you know, went through that that funnel, so to speak, right? So on foundation Buddhism, we say, okay, everything's gonna go through Four Noble Truths, but uh, there are other systems that uh, we're gonna start, start with, right? Can somebody think of another starting point where we say, okay, this is reality, this is what I know. Yeah. So we, we you, do have different go ahead, yeah. I I well, these these five skandhas are also empty of inherent existence is another starting point, isn't it? That is another starting point. Yes, definitely. So uh, I think. Zima can appreciate that, you know, it's like, so we could start there, like we're not, we're not even starting with, uh, you know, truth, suffering, we're just, there are five skandhas, <laughs> we're starting there. So uh, that's correct. But there, there are other starting points, what would be another starting point? Would the, um, the four preliminaries be a starting point? Mm, probably not. They're, those, those are connected with a more fundamental starting point, perhaps. But uh, those are those are a motivational point. So somewhat similar to foundation. So Ellen's going to go for it. How about everything arises dependently? That's very similar to like uh, the five skandhas, right? Yes. So, yeah, like that, you know, uh, or that's kind of a basically a Abhidharma approach, right? We're already starting. We're not 
we're not talking about a person. We're not talking about emotional nature, right? Just like we're talking about like things arise and disappear interdependently. Yeah. True. So that's that's that starting point. So I might have said the five skandhas, but I intended to say emptiness because I was quoting the Heart Sutra. <clears throat> so uh, that's another starting point too. <laughs> that's uh, a, a critical uh, starting point. So with, sometimes we start with, this is what's there. And sometimes we start with, this is what isn't there. Didn't find it. I'm sorry, didn't find anything, guys. <clears throat> That's, those are two big kind of starting points. Like, we know we found something here. We found five skandhas, we found interdependence. Another starting point is we, we didn't find anything. One starting point is we found suffering. <clears throat> So when we're uh, studying uh, Mahamudra and Dzogchen, what, what would be the starting point? So, so we have a very educated group here tonight. What would you say, Jack has? Everything is already self-liberated. Yeah, that, okay, that's, that's, yeah, so. Everything's already self-liberated. There's a premise behind that though. So what would be a starting point premise? We can be brave. We can we can be brave. Things exist. So there's a what? The stuff. That that would be an Abhidharma approach. Things things exist. So from Zogchen point of view or Mahamudra point of view, you'd have direct pointing to the nature of awareness, right? Direct pointing. It feels it feels different to me. You're not are you in a way, we're not necessarily asserting anything right away. Are we? Are we asserting Nate mind a little bit? Or so. <clears throat> and Zen, for example, uh, I had one teacher who uh, would uh, hold up an apple and uh, say, What is this, right? And some people would say, it tastes good, or that's an apple, or you couldn't say it's an apple, or it's a pear, or it's suffering, or it's bliss. So uh, this teacher enjoyed all those answers and then did something that uh, would not be an explanation, but would more be like a demonstration or direct pointing. So what do you, what do you think that was? Yeah. Just took a bite out of the apple. Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, that's that's a starting point. So from from let's say from that school's uh, view, that's we're starting from an introduction to your direct experience. Uh, we could start with an introduction from what we see uh, from relative point of view. We see skandhas, <clears throat> we see suffering, or we could say this is what you might uh, see from an absolute point of view. Uh, didn't find anything. <clears throat> and then this direct introduction to your lived experience. So what else, what else could we could we find that could be a starting point? Yeah. 
that that would also be like Abhidharma style. I found 12 Madonnas, right? Well, we're going to get into it uh, at some point after a Swatantrika. Uh, some, some people just start with logic, right? Any logicians or mathematicians here? Yeah, I don't know. I wasn't, I, I took logic in grad school, um, but um, I was never really good at math, you know, got as far as like dropped out in trig. I don't know how I got through anything, but so some, in some sense, some schools start out in a sense, just from logic. You think that's possible? Somebody please say yes, and then we'll be able to. Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Would you consider mind only to be yet another starting point? Uh, I would, you know, um, I, I would call it definitely a starting point. Uh, you know, that's brought out in Chittimatra Yogacara style. Um, like maybe Western philosophy would say a priori, you know, from the first, we have to like, we have to start there, you know, like that. So no one can deny that uh, they have a mind. Why, why is that? It, it takes some logic, you know, this is why logic's kind of fun. But well, just common sense. No one can deny they have a mind. Please someone help me out here so I can sleep tonight. <laughs> Say again. The ability to deny is a function of yeah, mind. the ability to deny is a function of mind. Somebody has to say it. You need a mind to say there's no mind, right? So that's interesting, right? So yeah, it is Descartes, and maybe it's like you know Buddhist too, right? <clears throat> so. Um, these, these questions are not dry intellectual questions. It's like we have to uh, really go deep to find out, uh, you know, what our starting point is and uh, build the basis on that. So I think from a starting point of dukkha, sarvam dukkham, so, we can build the rest of the edifice. Um, maybe we can start from uh, uh, Heart Sutra. Maybe we can start from uh, Dzogchen or Abhidharma. <clears throat> but I'd like uh, people to um, really examine what's your foundational starting point. I'm not sure there's like necessarily um, a best one, I think the best one is the one that actually works. Um, so uh, I've tried to point out examples of uh, starting points uh, for different people in the tradition, but I'd like each of you to think, what, what are we absolutely certain about? Which for me means we're able to uh, have confidence in it, it is true, we can defend the truth, and we're acting on it. Have those come together, okay? That should be easy, right? It's difficult, don't you think? Don't you think it's difficult? When we get really you know, <laughs> examine, we go, yeah, I will. maybe we all end up like St. Paul, <laughs> and you know, <clears throat> I was in in First Corinthians, you know, my, my body wants to do something, my soul wants to do something else, that the good I would do, I don't do, the evil that I don't want to do, I do, you know, do we end up like that? I think so, lots, right? 
Well, isn't that the, I, I know I shouldn't smoke, but I, but I can't stop. Isn't that exactly the same? Yes, yes. So <clears throat> in our tradition, we also want to examine uh, what, what false knowing is. So that's why Dharma is quite comprehensive because it isn't just enough to know, okay, here's how we know, here's how we're certain, here's how we can demonstrate it, here's how we can live it. But uh, how is it that we also uh, misknow things? How do, how do we get kind of confused? So in, in the West, I would say probably Western psychology has been the most interested in that. You know, how, how do we get screwed up? Um, because usually religiously, it, we just blame one person in the Garden of Eden, and then the rest goes from there, right? But in Dharma practice, how do we also establish uh, a misknowledge? So how do we know like when we're screwing up? Got any ideas on that, anybody? Yeah, that's, yeah, so, but why, why don't we always pay attention to the effect? We have many effects, but then we, how do we, yeah? Because of habit or because of samsara, because of the pain is too great? <clears throat> too much pain, we're looking the other way, maybe. Distraction. Distraction. <clears throat> so, when we really get into, uh, the epistemology side of things with the Naga Dharma Kirti, um, we're trying to come to terms with not only how do we know things, but how do we um, know things incorrectly. <clears throat> when when I took some classes from Robert Thurman, this was something he he particularly enjoyed, is talking about misknowledge like that. <laughs> so, uh, <clears throat> which is totally different than um, uh, just being wrong, you know. So, uh, we can go down the wrong street, um, but how is it that we uh, think we know which street it is, right? So, wrong could be a normative. Like, you went down the wrong street, and then somebody says, yeah, but I know I, you know, I guess this is from living where I do in Carmichael. Yeah, but I know that it was the the second turn, not the first. Have you ever said that? Somebody says, well, da da da, and you go, well, yeah, but I I know that, you know, you told me that. Or, you know, my favorite example is uh, when I used to videotape like couple therapy, couple counseling, and um, we'd we watch the video and the person said, I know I didn't say that. How, how can, you know, so <laughs> Elizabeth Zima likes the one. So yeah, so how do we do that? You know, like really, like how do we, I mean, for reals, right? How do we do that? Um, obviously we have an ex-president that's really good at that. So <laughs> like, really? And then how do you have people that actually believe it on top of it, right? So <clears throat> in our tradition, when I say the overall Dharma tradition, uh, we want to examine not only how we know things uh, and can uh, be certain of them, can prove them uh, and live them, but we also want to know uh, how it is that we cultivate uh, an act on uh, you know misknowledge, otherwise known as like delusion, <clears throat> um, because uh, skillful means in working with others, uh, it's not always that helpful to say, well, um, or it doesn't seem to help to say, uh, well, the election was verified you know, fair and square, right? This, that doesn't seem to be convincing, does it? Maybe you don't have these discussions, but I, I guess 
I weighed in where others should not weigh in or maybe I shouldn't weigh in like, well, okay, so that doesn't immediately change the situation, does it? So to be a benefit of others, we not only have to point out how we know something to be true, uh, but how we know it uh, to be untrue. It's kind of interesting because there's probably uh, some sci-fi novel about um, how people can't help but tell the truth or something. Probably Zima's read that something. Are there sci-fi people here? Do you ever read sci-fi? It's kind of fun. So like, there's got to be some novel or something where where people just have to keep telling the truth all the time, and they they can't tell anything but the truth. What do you think that world would be like? Short novel, long one. <laughs> Good marriage, bad marriage. Right? It's always really scary. I think when people say, are you serious? Like, Lama, are you serious? You really want me to tell the truth all the time? And they go, yeah, just tell the truth all the time. And they go, no, really, I can't tell the truth all the time. But what would happen if we did? Would, what would happen? Would we be in jail or? <laughs> wasn't, wasn't that a movie with um, Jim Carrey or something? Somebody couldn't help but tell the truth. Is that, was that? I'm sure, yeah, what is the name of that? Yeah. I don't remember. Oh, only it was Jim really Carrey. awkward, awkward for him. <laughs> yeah, only Jim Carrey. In the movie or afterwards. <laughs> okay. Well, are, are you talking about telling the truth or not, uh, or not editing? Because, uh, <clears throat> uh, you know. I'm talking about telling the truth, but we, we can edit. Because I used to have all kind, get in all kinds of trouble because I would tell the truth about all kinds of things that people didn't think I should tell the truth about. And if you tell the truth tell about them. what you believe to be the truth in the face of a bunch of people who believe the opposite, you also <clears throat> will get in a lot of trouble. Yes. I mean, so, from experience, yeah. I'm saying. <laughs> yes, I, I have a similar experience. It's gotten me in trouble too. So, um, so that's an interesting part in Buddhist tradition. So are, how are you able to tell the truth and edit at the same time, which is another word for skillful means? Is it possible to you know, tell truth, but it still make it uh, fit the circumstances correctly? That's not easy, it's not easy at all. But to do that, we must know actually what is the truth and be certain about it. And we have to also know what is untruth or delusion. In other words, to have that skillful means. Uh, Lama, can't you also uh, take the yourself out of it and tell the truth in a way that's not disruptive if you take your self out of it? Yeah, I think, you know, that's a good question that I don't want to totally get into right now, but um, <laughs> so, uh, you know, when should we use uh, uh, the personal pronoun and assert it and, and when is it not useful? The truth is, uh, lots of times our partners want us to come home on time. Is that a truth? <laughs> right. <clears throat> so in our tradition, yes, there's, there's uh, uh, truth from the relative point of view and there's truth uh, from uh, absolute point of view. And if we're studying uh, Yogacara, we could say there's the uh, interdependent truth, right? Personally, I like, I like the three, uh, I like the delusional, absolute and uh, relative truth 
style of Yogacara. Does anybody else? Yeah, it seems to have a lot of practical application, doesn't it? Well, that's completely wrong. That's like, you know, horns of a rabbit thing and very logical impossibility. But that's kind of, but, and then some things are relatively true. And then after it seems, it seems like we, we should be able to have it all in Dharma, don't you? So maybe as a bonus at some point, when you get through this, um, we'll read um, from Shantarakshida's uh, text. Um, he was really the last great Indian um, Acharya. Um, he was the one, of course, that came to Tibet and helped establish the monastic tradition along with his friend uh, Padmasambhava, right? And his king, Trisong Detson. So uh, uh, sometimes uh, Shantarashi's approach is called Yogacara Svatantrika Madhyamaka, right? <laughs> is there anybody that would like to cover it all? I do. I like to. I like to have it all. You know, like that. <clears throat> Sometimes he's also called the Greater Madhyamika, right? Yeah, particularly. Yeah, particularly in um, in English style, like Maha Madhyamika. Yeah, like that. Um, <clears throat> so that's uh, another discussion. But from the practice point of view. Um, you know, I, I would like to, you know, have people become conscious of what their starting point is and uh, how they know something to be true. Um, there's uh, a therapist that became famous maybe 10, 15 years ago um, by, uh, you know, just asking uh, her patients like, is it true? Is it really true? Do you know it to be true? Can anybody guess who that is? Yeah, so that's your homework if you want to look that up. So for some people, that form of kind of Socratic questioning uh, was really useful. Is that true? Is it really true? Do you know that to be true? Maybe I'm not totally um, uh, getting to her viewpoint, but um, she did get on TV and make a lot of money and sell books, so. <laughs> So it's like, is it really true? Really? You know it? Okay. <clears throat> Someone will figure it out before we meet again like that. But uh, all Dharma is really practical, you know, so uh, it, it does uh, come down to, you know, just our everyday life of being completely practical liberation, I would say. But it is important to notice where, where we start. What, what's our starting point? Uh, from my point of view, you know, you could, I mean, if you wanted to say, you could start outside the tradition, start there, see what happens. Some people do, you're talking to people, well, it can actually be certain and they'll say God exists. Okay, so you can start there. You can work with that, right? So I would wanna see what people come up with so these texts in the study make sense when we bring it back to our personal experience, don't you think? So uh, that's my bias. And uh, it's uh, the bias of uh, some of my teachers uh, that I enjoy. Our teachers like Kenshin Rinpoche, when he was on a couple of months ago, he says, well, really, what good is enlightenment or emptiness anyway? What what are we, you know, are we wasting our time here? What what are we going to do with it, right? So uh, there is always a practical application, right? Experiential. So I see some faces I haven't seen before. So thank you for newcomers tuning in like that. Hope this has been useful, not too esoteric, but. Uh, it's not necessary in Dharma talks, from my point of view, to uh, give you moral homilies, right? You already know that. <clears throat> so now it's it's summer. <laughs> so I thought I'd wear uh, a summer uh, 
row of like this this end, which is uh, uh, sometimes uh, you know Yogi's wear, right? So it's nice. So I have a bias towards experiential and a bias toward uh, being a yogi, whether you're monk or nun or householder, uh, you must do the practice and the training. I don't know of any teacher, anybody I've ever been with who said uh, that they were able to take any shortcuts. If you find someone like that, I would like to question him or her. Right? I would like to find that person like that. So it's eight o'clock, we need to do closing. So thanks everybody for their patience today. That's really nice. You know, it's, it's good to see some of you. I'll try to reach uh, by phone or text. So we'll say hi that way. It's been a very busy couple of weeks, but I'll try to reach out, okay? Deal? All right, let's, let's end with closing prayers. La la la. <laughs> uh, I, guess I'll, get... I guess I'll do them. Oh, okay. I guess you're on, yeah. So... I guess I'm not. <laughs> there we go. You're still, I can just present them for you. Okay. Due to the merits of these virtuous actions, may I quickly attain the state of a guru Buddha and lead all living beings without exception into that enlightened state. May the supreme jewel bodhicitta that has not arisen arise and grow, and may that which has arisen not diminish, but increase more and more. In the land encircled by snow mountains, you are the source of all happiness and good. All powerful Jinrezi, Tenzin Jatso, please remain until samsara ends. May the teachings of the Buddha flourish and may the upholders of the teachings remain forever. May all migrators achieve happiness and may they fulfill all their temporary and ultimate goals. Losang, magical display of the deep awareness of all the victorious ones, merciful giver of a stream of profound and vast instructions to the fortunate migrators. Please remain always unperishing, unchanging, unfading. Avalokiteshvara, great treasure of objectless compassion. Manjushri, master of flawless wisdom. Vajrapani, destroyer of the entire host of Maras. Tsongkhapa, crown jewel of the snowy land sages. Losang Dragpa, I make request at your holy feet. Thank you, Lamana. Yeah, thank you. Thank you all the way from Pennsylvania. It's fantastic. So lots of times I, I'm annoying. So I'd ask my teacher, like, well, what what are what are certainties that you think I have? You know, like that. He goes, You have certainties. And I go, I don't have any certainties. He goes, Well, you never doubt when you're eating. I've watched you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so like that. I said, you're right, you're right. And there are no doubts. No doubts. All right. So, uh, sweet dreams, everybody. We'll meet again. Ciao. Bye, Lama. Thank you. Uh, that was good. Thank you, Lama. <laughs> Bye, Lama. Thank, Thank you. you. Lama. Later. 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 Okay. Yeah. Ciao. Yeah.